thank you very much for invitation and introduction. It's my great pleasure to speak in this conference. Uh, before I begin my talk, I also want to express my gratitude to Professor Eluzi. I try to speak in French. Uh, uh, en 2004, lorsque j'ai été un, une étudiante en quatrième année à l'Université Tsinghua. À ce moment-là, le euh, professeur Luzi nous a donné euh, un cours de géométrie algébrique à Tsinghua et puis euh, recommandé par le euh, professeur Fontaine, Reino et aussi Luzi, euh, j'ai eu l'opportunité de euh, poursuivre mes études en France en 2005. Euh, et puis, euh, un premier moment en master 2 et puis une thèse avec Laurent Fag. Euh, euh, depuis notre connaissance, euh, professeur Luzi est toujours très gentil euh, pour moi en mathématiques et aussi dans la vie quotidienne. Euh, en, 2005, euh, en 2006, euh, il a été un de nos parents lorsque je voudrais louer un appartement Uh, avec Tilonton et Godonto au Pagone. Et en 2009, uh, j'ai participé à un groupe de travail organisé par uh, professeur Luzi et Alex Bouti uh, sur uh, le théorème de comparaison périodique. Uh, professeur Luzi uh, a pris beaucoup de temps uh, pour uh, m'aider à préparer mon exposé sur la gomologie cristalline. Uh, je me rappelle très bien que j'ai fait même deux fois répétition devant lui avant mon exposé public. Uh, j'ai pris beaucoup de choses de cette expérience unique. Uh, je vous remercie sincèrement, professeur Elusie. Bon, well, OK, now I start my talk about Newton's Diner and Weekly Admissible Locus in the Piet Hodge theory. It's a joint work with Xi Longtong. Okay, now first P is a prime number and FP is a finite field with P elements. FP bar uh, is the algebraic closure of FP. Uh, QP is the periodic field. We denote by QP breadth uh, the weight vector ring with coefficient in FP bar, or uh, uh, the, the fraction field of the weight vector ring with coefficient in FP bar. It can also be considered as the periodic completion of the maximal unramified extension of QP. Uh, we fix a P divisible group X over FP bar. Uh, we consider its rational geodony module. So it's an isocrystal. For example, if the P divisible group comes from the abelian variety, so the, it's the PN torsions of the abelian variety. Then in this case, the rational geodony module is exactly the, uh, the first crystalline cohomology group of X. Oh, the, in the subscript QP bra means that we phase change to QP bra. Now we want to consider uh, the deformation of this fixed p blue group. Now we consider K is a field extension. Pardon? It's like e, I think, no? Which one crease of A is not each one crease of X. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's a typo. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if K is a field extension of QP breath, we denote by OK the ring of integers of K. And if we denote by X a P W group over OK, and DXK is rational during module of, of X. In fact, it only depends on its a spectral fiber and it has a hot filtration uh, inside the rational geodon module as a subspace of k vector space. Uh, uh, again, if X comes from a Bayesian variety, then in this case, the rational geodon module is exactly the first Durham cohomology group of the generic fiber of this Bayesian variety. And the hot filtration is exactly the hot filtration of this a uh, Durham cohomology group. Now uh, we have the peer period mapping from the moduli spaces uh, of PW groups uh, that are isogenous to this fixed PW group uh, to the Grassmannian, which parametrizes d-dimensional uh, subspaces 
inside this dx. So which maps x to its hot filtration? Mm -hmm. A priori, the hot filtration is inside this uh, the crystal of this x. Now, as our PW group is isogenous to the fixed PW group modulo p, so by the rigidity of uh, crystals, uh, these two uh, isocrystals are isomorphic. So this uh, this sub this this uh, k sub vector space gives the d dimensional k sub vector space uh, in the isocrystal determined by the fixed PW group. Oh, I forgot to say that d is exactly the dimension of our uh, p a uh, fixed PW group. Okay, in other words, what is the periodic period mapping? It records the valuation of P, uh, it records the valuation of hot structures for the family of PW groups. So it's not very complicated. It's just the valuation of hot structures. Uh, so uh, Grotendieck asked the question in his ICM reports. He asked that, what's the image of this periodic period mapping inside of the Grossmannian? Here, the image is exactly what we call the periodic period domain or later we will call it admissible locus. Uh, in fact, in general, if we define the periodic period domain in this way, it's quite difficult to study the image because the periodic period mapping itself is al it's already very complicated. First, uh, and we can also define uh, the periodic period mapping in a more general setup. Here we consider period, uh, p-divisible groups. And now we can consider p groups with additional structures. That means we can replace the group GLN to an arbitrary reductive group. So in the most general setup, a periodic period mapping is an atomorphism from a local Schmura varieties to flag variety. Both sides are as uh, rigid analytic spaces over QP breadth or as backward spaces. Okay, uh, as before, its image is called the periodic period domain or called admissible locus. And I will introduce what is local Schmura varieties. Roughly speaking, uh, local Schmura varieties are generalization of moduli space of PW groups with additional structures. In the most classical case, the PEO type, this is studied by Harpo and Zink. And in the most general case, this is studied by Schulze and Wenstein. Uh, this local Schmura varieties, this is the local analog of Schmura varieties, as Schmura varieties is defined uh, from Schmura data, local Schmura varieties is also defined from local Schmura data. Here, local Schmura data, we have a triple G, B, mu. G is a rejective group of a QP. In, the first, in our first example, then the group is exactly G or N. B is an element in GQP bread. In fact, uh, this element, uh, well, when G equal to GLN, uh, this element determines, uh, determines are more precisely, the sigma conjugacy class of this B determines the, iso, uh, determines the isocrystal. So in fact, B determines uh, the isogeny class of a fixed P to group of F E bar. And mu is a minuscule co-character from the multiplicative group to G. Uh, in the GON case, uh, B determines exactly mu. So this mu does not show up. Uh, for general G, we also have this mu. And we also require that uh, B and mu should satisfy the Cotwitz condition. Uh, roughly speaking, it means that uh, the, the Newton polygon determined by B uh, and the hot polygon determined by mu should satisfy major inequality. And the flag variety, or is the flag, F is the flag variety attached to G mu. Or when G is a quasi split group, or then or this flag variety is defined by the quotient of G or by the parabolic subgroup determined by mu. For example, I still take GON as an example. 
if mu is of the form one appears d times and zero appears n minus d times, then uh, the flag variety is just the Rothmanian, which parametrizes d dimensional subspaces inside our n dimensional vector space. This is flag variety. Okay. I will give you two examples about periodic peer resumes, or two famous ones. The one is the looping tape case. In this case, uh, g equal to gln and mu is of the form 1000. Uh, b is basic. Uh, this, correspond to the, the this corresponds to uh, the fact that the, uh, the isocrystal determined by b is isoclean. It already appeared in the talk of Tang Yunqing yesterday. And in this case, uh, uh, the the periodic peer mapping is also called the Gross Hopkins peer mapping. It is studied by Gross and Hopkins. They give a very explicit formula about this periodic peer mapping. It's explicit, but very complicated. I learned this in when I was in the second year or master M2. And they show that this periodic peer mapping, in fact, it is subjective. So in this case, uh, our admissible locus. If you still remember, it's the image of the periodic period mapping. It, it's exactly the, the flag variety. In this case, the flag variety is the n minus one dimensional projective space. So in this case, the periodic period, periodic period domain is very clear. It's the n minus one dimensional projective space. Another case, the Genfield case, which is dual to the looping tape case. In this case, the group we consider is a multiplicative group of the division algebra of invariant one over n over QP. And mu is due as before, one, zero, zero, zero. Still B is basic. Then in this case, uh, the periodic period domain is called the Genfield up half space. It, it is uh, the complement in the n minus one dimensional pro uh, projective space of the union of all the QP rational hyperplanes. You see, this is this guy is already in this gene field up half space. It's already very complicated. And uh, from this, you can also see that it does not have a uh, algebraic geometry structure. It's only have a rigid geometry structure. Okay. Now, in order to understand the admissible locus inside the flag variety, uh, we want to we need to introduce the algebraic approximation uh, that we call it weakly admissible locus. This is this is defining an algebraic way and should be a bit easier to understand. Uh, this is this is uh, closely related to Fontaine's definition of weakly admissible. Filter isocrystals. Now I recall here. Uh, let C be a complete field extension of QP breadth. I denote by few isoc C over QP breadth the category of filter isocrystals over C over QP breadth. That means the isocrystal is defined over QP breadth and the filtration is defined over C. And uh, uh, for a filter isocrystal over C over QP breadth, uh, uh, the Fontaine defines the notion of weakly admissibility. Uh, in fact, this is some kind of semi-stability. Uh, he introduced two invariants for filter isocrystals. One invariant is called the Newton invariant. Newton invariant is the periodic valuation of the determinant of the Frobenius. And the Frobenius is uh, semi-linear its determinant is not well-defined, but its periodic valuation is so well-defined. Uh, this is a Newton point. Another invariant is called the Hodge invariant. Hodge is invariant is defined from the filtration. So we have two, for a filter isocrystal, we have two invariants. One is Newton invariant that is determined by the Frobenius, and the other is the Hodge invariant that is determined by the filtration. And uh, Fontaine call a filter isocrystal weakly admissible if its Newton invariant equals to its Hodge invariant. And for any sub-object uh, of this 
filter isocrystal, we always have the Hodge invariance less than or equal to the Newton invariance. This is the definition of weakly admissibility. Now, how to define our weakly admissible locus? First, in the GON case. In the GON case, a point in the flag variety gives, in the GON case, the flag variety is always a Grassmannian. So a point gives a filtration. In fact, a filtration just means a subspace in this n-dimensional C vector space. So a point Bx, uh, so up here, Bx, from this pair Bx, we can define a filtered isocrystal over C over QP breadth. Here, B, as before, determines uh, an isocrystal and determines the Frobenius structure. So this gives the isocrystal. And this point X gives the filtration. So this is a filtered isocrystal. The pair Bx is called weakly admissible if the filter isocrystal is weakly admissible. Uh, now for general G, the, for general G, we use representation to reduce uh, to the GON case, as you can imagine. A point is called weakly admissible if there exists a faithful representation from G to GLN, such that, uh, the, the cor such that we get a pair, which is in uh, for this group GLN, such that, uh, that the, the given, the corresponding filter isocrystal is weakly admissible. Okay, now we are ready to define our weakly admissible locus. Uh, this is introduced by Harpo and Zink. So a point in the uh, flag variety is weakly admissible if and only the pair Bx is weakly admissible. Indeed, we can show that uh, the admissible locus is contained in the weakly admissible locus. These two are both open subsets, open subspaces in the flag variety. In fact, uh, the definition of weak, weakly admissible locus is algebraic. It is defined by removing a perfinite union of Schubert varieties. It is also approximation of admissible locus in the following sense. Uh, Comets and Fondan show that uh, these two spaces have same K points where here K is a finite extension of QP breadth. That means that the admissible locus and the weakly admissible locus, they have same classical points. And Hartle shows that in general, these two spaces are not equal. Okay, uh, now inside the flag variety, we have two open spaces and the, weak, the weakly admissible locus should be very prosh to the admissible locus. Uh, it's natural to ask about the extreme cases, when the weakly admissible locus coincide with the admissible locus, and when the weakly admissible locus equal to the whole flag variety. Oh, oh, uh, in the two examples that I have explained, in the looping tate case, the admissible locus equal to the flag, uh, equal to the weakly admissible locus equal to the flag variety. These two inclusion are both equality. And in the Genfield case, uh, the admissible locus equal to the weakly admissible locus. Okay, now we want to discuss about the extreme cases. The first extreme case is admissible locus equals to the weakly admissible locus. Uh, we want to give a criterion about this. This kind of problem is uh, this kind, uh, in fact, Hubbard and uh, Farg and Hubbard give the conjecture when, uh, give, which describes when these two uh, spaces are equal. Uh, how to deal with the GON case? In a joint work with Frag and Shen, uh, we proved for the B basic case. In this case, admissible locus and the weakly admissible locus coincide if and only if the pair is fully Hodge Newton decomposable. The, uh, this fully Hodge Newton decomposable, this is a purely group theoretic condition that I will explain later. And I also consider the non basic case. In the non basic case, there is a similar criterion for a bit more complicated that I do not plan to recall here. And Goiz, mm He, -hmm. and Nye, they, uh, they introduced and systematically studied 
uh, the condition of Foley Hodge Newton decomposability condition and classify all the possible pairs uh, that are Foley Hodge Newton decomposable. Uh, this is one extreme case that weakly admissible locus is uh, minimal, it's equal to the admissible locus. Another extreme case is studied by Harpopper. Uh, he studied the case then when weakly admissible locus coincide with the whole flag variety. Uh, he also gave a group, group direct criterion when these two spaces uh, coincide and he called such chapels weakly accessible. Uh, I do not plan to give the, comp the, comp uh, the definition, but I will explain the geon case. In the geon case, everything is very clear. Uh, just one remark. If GB mu is weakly accessible, that means the, uh, the weakly admissible locus coincide with the flag variety, then B is basic. Hence, it is determined by the pair G mu. So the weak accessibility only depends on the pair G mu. So we can talk about when a pair is weakly accessible. Okay, first I, uh, I would like to say what, what we I want to do in this talk. Uh, I have just explained two extreme cases. Uh, weakly admissible locus is minimal and weakly admissible locus is maximal equal to the whole flood variety. So the goal of this talk is to unify these two extreme cases in a way that uh, the weakly admissible locus can always be considered maximal and give a group direct criterion for the cases that the weakly admissible locus are maximal. Uh, when the weakly admissible locus equal to the flood variety, it's, it's easy to imagine that this is already maximal. It cannot be bigger. But the other extreme case, when the weakly admissible locus coincide with the admissible locus, it seems that it's minimal. Uh, so what does it mean? How can I explain that to be maximal? For that, I need to introduce the Newton's stratification on the flood variety. And this also, or uh, this also needs the, the frog function curve that I will explain later. Okay, before I explain what does it mean the weakly admissible locus is maximal, or first I would like I want you to see the GON case, the two extreme cases for GON. Now everything is very explicit. Now the group G is equals GON. I also suppose B is basic. Then uh, the weakly admissible locus coincide with the whole flag variety if and only if G mu is weakly accessible. In this case, it means that mu is central or it is of the form uh, one appears R times, zero appears N minus R times such that R and N are co-prime to each other. This is a weakly accessible case. And another extreme case, weakly admissible locus coincide with the admissible locus. In this case, we know that these two coincide if and only if the pair is fully Hodge Newton decomposable. That means mu is central or one of the following three cases holds. The first case, mu is the form of the form one. One only appears one times and zero appears n minus one times. Or mu is of the form one appears n minus one times and zero appears only one time. And the third case, it's an uh, exceptional case, n equal to four, and mu is equal, mu is of the form one, one, zero, zero. I can show you in this example, what does it mean for a Hodge Newton decomposable? Okay, so in the, this last example, n equal to four, mu is of the form one, one, zero, zero. Then uh, the Hodge polygon determined by mu is the upper polygon that I draw here. It has two slopes, one, one, and two slopes, zero, zero. This is a hard polygon. By major inequality, all the possible Newton polygons should uh, lies, uh, lies under this hard polygon and they should have same end points. Moreover, as a Newton polygon, we should require that all the uh, breakpoints are integral points. So, uh, so for given a hard polygon, there is only one basic uh, Newton polygon. Basic means that all the slopes are equal. 
So in this case, we just connect the start points and the end points of the hot polygon. This gives our Newton polygon. In this case, the basic Newton polygon is of slope one half, one half, one half, one half. This is slope of our beam. Except this basic Newton polygon, there are also other possible Newton polygons. I will show you some other possible Newton polygons. For example, we also have this blue polygon. This is also a possible Newton polygon that satisfies major inequality with respect to this uh, hot polygon. You see this has uh, slopes one, one half, one half, zero. And note that this Newton polygon touch the hot polygon. The first part and the last part, these two parts, it touch the hot polygon. And two other examples of possible Newton polygons. For example, also this uh, green polygon, it has slope two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, zero. It also touches the hot polygon. Okay, with this example in hand, I think you can now, you now you can understand what does mean hot Newton decomposability. Uh, hot Newton appear G mu, you always consider G O N case. For G O N, uh, G mu is fully Hodge Newton decomposable, means that uh, for any possible Newton polygon that are not basic, it always touches the Hodge polygon. So in this example, you'll see, except this Newton basic Newton polygon, this, does, this basic Newton polygon does not touch the Hodge polygon. For the other possible Newton polygon that satisfies the major inequality, always touch the hot polygon. So this, this is the meaning of fully hot Newton decomposability. Okay, one more time here. Okay, now I want to explain, in order to explain the meaning of uh, the weakly admissible locus maximal, we need to introduce the Newton stratification on the flag variety. For that, we need to use Fark Fontan curve and, uh, and reinterpret uh, the admissible locus and weakly admissible locus as modifications of G bundles on the Fark Fontan curve. Now we let C be a complete algebraic cost field over QP breadth, denoted by X a Fark Fontan curve over QP, equipped with a closed point infinity such that its residue field is equal to C. I will not give the precise definition of Fark Fontan curve, uh, but I will explain it's, uh, it's uh, the most important pro property of Fark Fontan curve that is need uh, that that we need. Our Fark and Fontan shows that there is natural bijection between uh, the isomorphism classes of isocrystals over QP breadth and the isomorphism classes of vector bundles over the Fark Fontan curve. Uh, by a dual noting mining classification, we know that the category of isocrystals over QP breadth is semi-simple with simple objects uh, parameterized by rational numbers. So translate on the vector bundle side, we know that uh, the uh, vector bundles on the Fark Fontan curve are always direct sum of stable bundles of the form O lambda with lambda a rational number. Uh, but we should take care that it's not an equivalence of category. The reason is that on the isocrystal side, uh, for, uh, isoclean, for isoclean isocrystals of different slope, there is no non-zero uh, morphism be between them. But on the vector bundle side, are uh, given two stable bundles, O lambda and O lambda prime. If lambda is less than or equal to lambda prime, then there exist infinitely many morphisms between O lambda and O lambda prime. So uh, the algebraic side and the, so, uh, the isocrystal side can be considered to be the algebraic side. The vector bundle side is the geometric side. Uh, these two sides does not give it, the exact does not give same information. This is also the reason that the admissible locus does not coincide with the weakly admissible locus. Uh, the weakly admissible locus uh, reflects the information about the algebraic sides 
and uh, while the uh, vector bundles reflect the information of the geometric size. Okay. Uh, there is also a group theoretic uh, version of this bijection. Again, we replace G O N by G. We denote by G, uh, by B G the set of uh, sigma conjugacy classes in G of Q P breadth. When G equal to G O N, uh, B G is uh, B G is in bijection uh, with the isomorphism classes of isocrystals of dimension n. So uh, in fact, BG can be considered as isomorphism classes of isocrystals with G structure over QP bread. As a group theoretic version of the previous bijection, we have a bijection between the set BG and the set of, uh, of the and the, the isomorphism classes of G bundles of over the fog Fulman curve, which maps our sigma conjugacy class of B to EB, the corresponding G bundle. Uh, two uh, points in the flag variety. Uh, this defines the modification uh, of the uh, G bundle EB that we denote by EBX. In fact, outside the point infinity, uh, the, the G bundle EBX is isomorphic to EB. And, uh, and for a neighborhood of infinity, we take the trivial bundle. And the grouping data is given by this given by this point X. Roughly speaking, it's like that, the modification. Uh, for simplicity, you can always imagine the GON case. Mm -hmm. Then the G bundle is exactly the vector bundle. Then a point uh, in the flag variety is called admissible. It's called admissible. Or, uh, that means it's in the admissible locus. If and only if the modification is semi-simple, uh, semi-stable, sorry. So, so you see this is very easy to verify. As we also know that the degree of this vector bundle is zero. So semi-stable uh, semi also means this is a trivial bundle. This is a trivial vector bundle. And a point is in the weakly admissible locus if and only if uh, the modification is a weakly semi-stable. Uh, for semi-stability, we know that we need to test for all the sub vector bundles. And for the weakly semi-stability, we do not need to test all the sub-batch bundles, but only test all the sub-batch bundles arising from sub-isocrystals. So we have much less conditions to verify. So from this definition, you can easily see that the admissible locus is contained in the weakly admissible locus. And because for the weakly uh, semi-stability condition, we have less conditions. Okay, uh, now I can introduce the Newton stratification on the flag variety. Uh, in fact, the Newton stratification uh, parametrizes the isomorphism classes of the modifications. More precisely, a point is in the Newton strata corresponding to B prime if and only if the modification of EB at X is isomorphic to the G bundle EB prime. In particular, uh, we know that uh, the admissible locus is exactly the strata corresponding to one. So this corresponds to the uh, chiral bundle. So this is the strata corresponding to one. This is the open strata in this Newton stratification. Uh, then it's a natural question to ask, so which Newton strata contains weakly admissible points? As we know that admissible Locus is contained in the weakly admissible locus. And we would like to know which Newton strata intersects with the weakly admissible locus. Uh, in our joint work with Fog and Shen, uh, we proved that, in fact, this, this result is not written explicitly. It is hidden in the proof of our main results. Uh, we show that the weakly admissible locus does not intersect with all the neuron strata. It only intersects with the neuron strata that are hot newton indecomposable with respect to new b mu, mu minus one. 
What does it mean? Uh, here, in fact, uh, associated to new B mu minus one, we can also attach a polygon that we also consider it as a hard polygon. And to B prime, we also have a Newton polygon. Th these two guys are called Hodge Newton indecomposable, Hodge Newton indecomposable. If and only if these two polygons does not touch each other, this is a so-called Hodge Newton indecomposable. In particular, when G mu is fully Hodge Newton decomposable, if you still remember the definition for Hodge Newton, uh, fully Hodge Newton decomposability, it means that uh, on the right, in this case, on right on the right side, there is only one Newton starter, the Newton starter corresponding to the admissible locus. So in this case, we see that the weakly admissible locus equals to the admissible locus. So in fact, this argument uh, shows that uh, fully Hodge Newton decomposability implies admissible locus equals to weakly admissible locus. And FEMA, uh, very recently, FEMA also shows that, in fact, uh, the weakly admissible locus intersects with each of the neurons daughter appears in the right, on the right, yes. Then we say the weakly admissible locus is maximal if the equality holds. This inclusion, the equality. Now we can see that, for example, in the uh, when G mu is fully Hodge Newton decomposable, and in this case, we know that on the right hand side, we have nothing but just the admissible locus. So this equality holds. So we know that in the extreme case, when the admissible locus equal to the weakly admissible locus, uh, the weakly admissible locus is maximal by, um, by definition. Okay. Uh, there are several natural questions to ask. First, uh, first is that in which cases the weakly admissible locus is maximal? This is the first question. Uh, and a more precise question that uh, for each of these neuron starter, for which starter is completely contained in the weakly admissible locus? These are the two questions that we hope to answer in our drawing work. And uh, in this talk, I only uh, plan to explain, uh, I only plan to give a complete result for the first question. For the second question, I just mentioned mention words. Uh, for the second question, I think we are able to give a criterion just for the GON case. When uh, for GON, when a given neuron starter is completely contained in the weekly small locus, in fact, uh, this is called a criterion, but maybe it's better to call it a, a, a logarithm. It is defined in an inductive way that we can compute uh, whether a given neuron star is contained in the weakly admissible locus. And we can only, for the moment, we can only deal with the GON case. The reason is that uh, to deal with this kind of problem, we need to determine, uh, given two vector bundles over the, on the Fog Fondant curve, we want to determine which kind of vector bundles can be realized as the extension of these two vector bundles. And we can give our answer to this question in GON, but just in an inductive way. That's why our criterion is just a logarithm. And for the other groups other than GON, and we don't know whether we can generalize to other groups, this is still a work in progress. We, should, we need to work on that. Okay, so in this talk, we only focus on the first question, in which cases the weakly admissible locus is maximal. This is our main results. Uh, we can give a group theoretic criterion uh, when the weakly admissible locus is maximal. Uh, we say that the weakly admissible locus is maximal if and only if the pair G mu is, we call it weakly for Hodge Newton decomposable. What does it mean? Uh, before I, I give a definition about the weekly for Hodge Newton decomposability, I recall the minute criterion for the fully Hodge Newton decomposability uh, proved by Goiz, He, and Ni. They show that the pair G mu is fully Hodge Newton decomposable if and, then, if and only if the pairing of mu with any 
relative fundamental weights is less than or equal to one for, a, for any relative fundamental weight. Now we have a similar minute criterion for the weekly four hot Newton decomposability. You see it's very similar. <laughs> uh, we, you can also consider this as a definition for the weekly four hot Newton decomposability in the quasi split case. Uh, we say a pair G mu is weakly for Hodge Newton decomposable. If and only if it's the pairing of mu with the relative fundamental weight, if it's an integer, then it's less than or equal to one. There is also a similar uh, criterion for the non quasi split case. But in this talk, for simplicity, I just give the quasi split case. So uh, it's clear that. Uh, fully Hodge Newton decomposability implies the weekly for Hodge Newton decomposability. Or maybe mm -hmm. it's still not that clear what does it mean. I will also show it to you in the GON case. In the GON case, everything is very clear. Okay, for GON, a pair is, G, uh, is weekly for Hodge Newton decomposable if one of the following occurs. So the first case, is the weakly accessible case. Weakly accessible means is equivalent to say the weakly admissible locus equals to the whole flag variety. In this case, mu is central or mu is of the form one appears r times and zero appears n minus r times such that r and n are co-prime to each other. The second case is the fully Hodge Newton decomposable case. Uh, this, this is the case correspond to uh, the weakly admissible locus coincide with the uh, admissible locus. In this case, uh, there we have mu is central, or mu is of the form one, zero appears n minus one times, and one appears n minus one times zero, or n equal to four, and mu is of the form one, one, zero, zero. And last line is the new cases. Uh, mu is of the form one appears two times, uh, zero appears n minus two times, or one appears n minus two times, zero appears two times. Or exceptional case that n equal to six and mu is of the form one, 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 zero, zero, zero. You see, it looks very parallel to the fully Hodge Newton decomposable case. Uh, before I give a sketch of the proof, I just show you an example to persuade you that this kind of theorem should be true. Okay, I right, still take this exceptional case as our example. The case that mu is a uh, g and g is geo six and mu is all form one 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 zero zero zero. In this case, uh, the basic uh, Newton polygon is of the form uh, one half appears six times. The cor this means the corresponding isocrystal uh, is the direct sum of three copies of simple isocrystal of slope one half. And a uh, new B, mu minus one is of the form one half appears three times and also minus one half appears three times. So, so the hot polygon given by this new B mu minus one is I draw here. So we have one half appears three times and minus one half appears three times. Uh, so for all the neuron strata appears in this uh, flag variety, it has, uh, it satisfies, it's Newton polygon satisfies major inequality with respect to the polygon determined by new B mu minus one. That means all the possible Newton polygons should lie under this polygon and have the same endpoints as this hot polygon. So for example, the only basic polygon has slope zero. This corresponds to the admissible locus. This is one Newton polygon. And I show you another possible Newton polygon. This is another possible Newton polygon. It has uh, slopes one third, one third, one third, minus one third, minus one third, minus one third. So these are the two Newton polygons that are Hodge Newton indecomposable with respect to new B mu minus one. 
I recall that a, a Newton polygon is ho called hot Newton in decomposable, means that the two polygons does not touch each other. So you see these, for these possible Newton polygons, they do not touch the hot polygon. These are the only, these are the only two Newton polygons that are hot Newton in decomposable with respect to our hot polygon. I can show you other possible Newton polygons. They are they always they are they are not hot Newton in decomposable. For example, this green polygon, it has slope one half one half and uh, one fourth appears four minus one fourth appears four times. And we have five other uh, hot Newton decomposable Newton strata. And by our result, we know that the weakly admissible locus should be contained in the uh, Newton strata that corresponding to Hodge Newton in decomposable uh, Newton polygons. Then, uh, that means the weakly admissible locus should contain in the admissible locus union with the Newton strata corresponding to this B prime. So there is, there is only two Newton strata. So in order to show that uh, the weakly admissible locus is maximal, that means we need to show any points in this uh, Newton strata corresponding to B prime, every point is weakly admissible. We need to show this. But on the other side, a point in this Newton strata, if it contradicts with the weakly admissibility, then the problem should come from these breakpoints. But by the weekly four Hodge Newton decomposability, uh, this tells us that the x coordinates of the breakpoints cannot be the dimension of the sub isocrystal B. In this case, the x coordinate of these breakpoints, this is three, but uh, for in our in our case, the isocrystal is direct sum of uh, isocry of sub isocrystals that are always of slope one half. So all the sub isocrystals should have a uh, dimension even. So this break point can cannot comes from a sub isocrystal. Uh, this tells us that uh, this break point cannot come from a sub isocrystal. So it can not be non weakly admissible. So, it's, so this means that any point in this uh, Newton structure should contain in the weakly admissible locus. In fact, we can also uh, use this criterion. We can also give uh, another definition uh, about the uh, weakly for Hodge Newton decomposability. We recall that our uh, pair G mu is called uh, fully. Uh, Hodge Newton decomposable means that for any Newton for any Newton strata uh, that satisfy major inequality, if it's not basic, then it touches the Hodge polygon. And for the weak uh, fully Hodge Newton decomposability, it means that if uh, for all the Newton strata uh, that satisfy uh, major inequality with respect to the Hodge polygon, if it's not basic and if it does not touch the hot polygon, then it cannot come from a sub crystal. This can also be considered as a definition uh, for the weekly for Hodge Newton decomposability. Okay. Okay. Uh, finally, I will give an outline on the proof. In fact, uh, uh, this is exactly a group theoretic formulation of what explained in this example. Uh, the proof is quite direct. The first step uh, is that uh, we explain uh, the pairing mu and uh, relative fundamental weights is in is an integer, means that uh, the isocrystal corresponding to B can be decomposed into direct sum of sub isocrystals with shape with some given shape. This given shape is related to this relative fundamental weight. Uh, so I recall that why I have need this, because this appears in our minute criterion. I explained that this, uh, this pairing, the integer means that uh, our, mm, yes. 
years. It means that uh, our isocrystal can be decomposed in a given form, roughly speaking, it's like this. The second step, uh, we show that uh, a pair G mu is weakly fully, uh, weakly for Hodge Newton decomposable if and only if the pair G mu B mu minus one is fully Hodge Newton decomposable. This is similar in the uh, fully Hodge Newton decomposable case. Our criterion is, is about G mu, but in fact, uh, it's more practical to deal with G new B, new B new minus one. In fact, in our example, I say that the weekly for Hodge Newton decomposability implies uh, the x coordinates of the breakpoint of something. This, this is exactly the weekly for for Hodge Newton decomposability for the pair G new B mu minus one. You see as this polygon is nu b mu minus one, but not the polygon mu. So this, this condition is more easy to use. So we need to prove that these two conditions are in fact uh, equivalent. So the, by this step one and step two, uh, step one plus step two, we can show that uh, weakly for Hodge-Newton decomposability implies that uh, the weakly admissible locus is maximal. And for the other side, we need step three. If a pair G mu is not weakly for Hodge Newton decomposable, then in this case, we can construct very explicit points that are not uh, weakly admissible. Then this contradicts with the maximality of the weakly admissible locus. So this uh, proves the necessity. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I stop here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are uh, there any questions? Mm -hmm. huh? uh, so, just, just a just, uh, historical remark. In the in the olden days, uh, cat inequality, cat conjecture, and uh, uh, major inequality. So it was uh, Newton uh, above arch, but of course for uh, group theoretic reason, of course it's uh, much better now to to have the, the reverse inclusion. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm using it sometimes I always picture. are right the other side. <laughs> yes, it depends yes. on whether we draw the polygon in a convex way or in a concave way. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, so then, right, last question, probably I, I'm not. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard for me to understand that, but uh, uh, how do you construct those? Uh, and then the, the last slide, you said that you are able to construct some, uh, uh, you can construct points uh, that are not weakly admissible. So such a construction is must be very difficult, no? How do you do No, that? no, no, not, not, not very difficult, in fact. In fact, it's, uh, uh, in fact, in this situation, I think, uh, in, indeed, we need to construct some extensions of batch bundle in the GON case, extensions of batch bundles. But in the in the case that we need it, in fact, we in the the extensions the are bundle, always. Uh, the, the, you mean the bundle the fact for pen curve? Hmm? You mean the bundle uh, over the fact for pen curve? Yes, the modification of batch bundles over the fact for pen curve. And uh, how do you, you do you do that? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we first, uh, how to say that? Uh, 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 maybe, maybe just in this example. Uh, no, this, this is not an example. Uh, for maybe we, in more complicated examples, if there exists, we want to construct points. That in this example, we do not exist this kind of points. If it exists, this kind of points, I think we can construct uh, the points from the Newton polygon when it's uh, from the break points that comes from uh, sub iso crystals. We can, we can construct some extensions of batch bundles that has, in fact, they are, that are split and satisfy the non weakly Hodge Newton decomposability condition. Mm 
Thank you. Um, are there are there other questions from the room? Uh, any from the room? No. No. Okay. Well, uh, let's thank the speaker again.